and welcome back to Mindful Model Maker. We're carrying on with uh, making the box cab loco from PS Models, Phil, Phil Sharples. Um, and I've done one axle so far and then I'm going to do the other axle on here so that you can see and the one I'm going to do is, is the one that's going to be motorised or driven from the motor anyway. What I've done, the extra bit to what the standard loco comes, because I want to make it four wheel drive, because if you add that on in the beginning, if you do get any little tiny gradients on your railway or little difficult curves, or you want to put just a little bit more weight on to tow, then obviously you stand more chance making it four wheel drive. It's a very simple four wheel drive system. I think it costs three pounds something, and about four it's four fifty altogether with the postage, something like that. Right, so it's a four wheel drive belt and pulley kit to suit the three millimeter axles because that's what these are, and it we want the one that is fifty mil, so it's fifty mil centers. There is a smaller one and a larger one, so this that center to there is fifty mil. So, but it tells you on when you go on, on his website to order bits, it'll tell you which kit that you need for it. Okay, um, so it comes with two pulleys and a rubber band. Now, all you've got to remember is once you've cut the axle and you put one wheel on, I put a little spot of super glue inside the axle to hold into the wheel. You then push it through a little way, then you put on your pulley wheel and you've got to make sure you don't want it dead in the center because if you've got it dead in the center it's going to hit the motor with the worm drive on so you don't want that so do it to one side either side there's no no right or wrong side to put it um, so I just put it on the side I put it on but the other thing is make sure you loop the rubber band over slide the axle through attach the wheel the other side check the centers and there are little washers between the wheel and the actual wooden sides so that the wheel never rubs on the wood. It, it rubs on these little, I think they're aluminium washers. Um, so it does, and I make sure it spins. Now it tells you on the instructions the length of axle. Now it gives you two lengths because obviously you can make this to fit 32 millimeter track or you can fit this to fit 45 millimeter track now I've selected 45 millimeter track because that's what I've got because I want to build this layout with this plastic track that I've got so and try that out so that's that's the whole um, process that I'm going through and the reasons why I'm doing it 45 mil um, it's only it's not much difference um, but on the instructions it will tell you the back to back which on here is 40 mil with the washers on, it's slightly over, but it doesn't matter. You can put it on the track, and there is a lot of sideways movement. There's a lot of play in it, but it doesn't actually matter. So you put it on, and it moves a little bit. Because you couldn't have it where it rubs hard on the rail, because one, it would slow it down, and two, something it would probably ride up the side of the track and come off. So there's quite a bit of tolerance, but then you, that's why you've got the flanges on the wheels as well. So, yeah, the wheels need just a little bit. There's a couple of little bits on the wheels that just need filing off. Um, I would imagine these are probably injection molded, the wheels. I don't think they are 3D printed. They don't look 3D printed. Um, then that pulley will eventually go across onto the other one. So, of course, when you slip the other axle through, You've got to make sure it doesn't have to go onto the pulley. It can be off the pulleys, but it's the axle has got to go through it because otherwise um, you'll have a big problem. It's no good cutting this and trying to join it. I don't. I wouldn't like to do that. But uh, yeah, so that's how that works. Right. The next step. What I did earlier on when I was doing this, I wrote down. Even though the instructions are on the piece of paper, you've got to keep looking at them. You could write down, cut the axle, write down the length of the axle that you need to cut the length, cut the axles. You could do both at the same time. I've decided to do one first and then do the second one so that you can see it being done. 
Um, then the next thing is um, make sure the wheels are clean. You can run around with a file. Um, they don't take long to clean up once they've been running for a little while. I can assure you of that. So that, that does the rest of the cleaning. Then once you've done that, get all the parts that you need. The pulley, <coughs> the little washers, the actual bearings. There are bearings that go in the wood, but it tells you that in the instruction. And you do that on the, that's one of the first things you do is push fit the bearings into the wood and make sure they're flush. They're slightly... Um, narrower than the wood so they should fit just inside you don't want them protruding um, again line them up nice and gently you can push them in with your fingers and then make sure that they're not protruding if they do protrude anyway inside is better than out because out obviously could alter the width that um, you want to set the wheels at so they're just things so get all those bits written down in a list so that when you're putting it all together you do it in that uniformed way and that way you won't really go wrong now the one we're going to do now is a little bit harder this axle because we've got two things other than the two wheels so there's four things actually going on to the axle you've got the two wheels um you've got the little spacer um, washers as well to go on but also you've got um the pulley and the cog that's going to mesh with this um, because it doesn't always matter if you get the cog lined up straight away but as long as it's on there and then you can hold it and slide it along and, and then when you've got it in position then you can just close it down anyway that's what we're going to do on this next bit so the next thing I'm going to do is cut the length of the axle so axle length are 42 millimeters for the 32 mil and 53 for the 45 so if you've got a decent metric rule um, which i have here yeah, steel rule it's clearly marked in uh, whole millimeters and half millimeters so that's quite easy um, i've got the axle already in the vise and I've got a pencil so that I can just line up, double check what I'm cutting. So 42 mil for that track and 53 for 45. So I want 53 millimeters. So I'm just going to put that on there like so. And make sure it's dead level with the end. One, two, three, there. That's it. Then I'm just going to turn that round like so. Put that there. A little bit further down. So that's in there with a black pencil mark. And then I have a junior hacksaw. And then I'm just going to put it onto the mark and cut. <laughs> it leaves a burr on the end so we'll take that out I think that hacksaw blade may be getting a little bit blunt so you could hear it right so I'll just get one of my files and take the burr off because obviously if you're going to try and push it in the hole of the wheel with the burr on two things will happen one it'll be very difficult to go in and if you do succeed because this is a very rough edge it'll act a bit like a drill and it'll make the hole bigger so once you've cleared the burr, then it'll be loose on the axle. You don't really want it loose on the axle. You want it enough to be able to get it where you want it. And then that's it. So we'll just take the burrs off, make sure it's all nice and smooth on the ends. And then you don't really have any problem. So that's that bit. You can feel it when you twiddle it round. If it feels good, it's okay. And if it's not, then it's not. that right good so next take a wheel 
have a look at the wheel. It's got a little burr on it. Get rid of the little burr. Don't go too thing about it. Because don't forget, it doesn't ride on the outer flange. That flange is just to stop it, to keep it on the track. But all railways, no matter what, from full size right the way down to the smallest railway, they, the wheels won't fit exactly either side. They fit inside the track with a little bit of play. You need movement from side to side. And actually, I mean, I've had five inch gauge locos, and when you put them on the track, and that, there's more play than you think. You think, whoa, that's a bit. But that is that is how it is, and that's how it works. Um, so, you learn all these things as you're doing them. You don't notice it so much with smaller gauge stuff, but as it gets bigger, you do. Um, and of course weight and all the other things play a part in all of this. Right, so what I'm going to do first is I have a little tube here, a little bottle of super glue, which I keep well out of the way of everything else. I'm just putting a tiny little blob on the end of the axle. That's it. Just a little blob. And stay there. Then I'm going to push that into the wheel. And I'm going to push it so it's just more or less flush with the end. Because I because I've done so many of these, I know roughly where, where it's got to go. So that's one wheel on. I'm going to make sure there's no glue come through the axle. So it's all just on that tip of the wheel there. So there's a little bit in there that's just going to stop that. Now the next thing we need to put on there is one of these little, I think they're alley washers, all right? So we pop that on, that's it. Then we can offer that up, we can just run it through, just make sure it all lines up, it should do. Yeah, easy. You can see how well that runs. Now while we're doing that like so, I'll just clean up the other wheel. But, uh, I do love making these models because you could do so, so many quirky things with them when you're finished and, and the bits that you can add. I mean, if you look back at my old videos and you'll see the rivet details and I've put a couple of old oil cans. If I leave that one there, you can see it. You can see old oil cans off of another model. The louvers, they were easy. They're just quadrant, just cutting little strips and placed down and they look like louvers. Uh, the rivets, well, they are demontes. They are something to do with nail art. So women, when they had their nails done, they have all these little sequin things where you can get these little black ones. I think they're one millimetre. It's on one of my early videos, if you want to watch. And I just glue them. Well, they come with an adhesive on them. You just pop them on. And by the time you've painted them, the paint will hold them from moving anyway. Um... So there, there are a video of me adding all that extra detail uh, around the plate work, around the wheels, um, all around the cab and all of that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, it took me a little bit of time to do, but it's worth it because on, on these railways for real, yeah, yeah, I mean, you might like your models looking pristine and clean and everything else. Yeah, that's all right. But the problem is in real life, these these locos weren't like that. They were worked to death, um, and uh, that's that's just how it was. Right. Next, okay. If you look on my list, which I haven't got here at the moment, but if I did have it, it would be here. And on it, it would say, "Put the pulley wheel on," because the pulley wheel's got to go next because that's the side I've decided. Now it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it will go. So. Push that in. I'm going to say like so, but it's not doing anything yet. What you could do, if you're having trouble, take it off, take it out, and try it first. The dummy run. Right, there we are. She's on. Right, take it back off. Make sure your washer's on. Put it back. Put it back on again. We'll line all these up later on once we've got the main one is to get the cog on. Right, so 
we've got that on that's there like so if you can see that I hope you can so we've got the pulley wheel on it's not in its proper place yet but we don't know exactly where we want that yet so the next thing of course is this and I don't think it matters exactly what way around that goes so I will put it like so so next we've got to feed this on now that might be a bit harder Right, it's going. Not going square, but it's going. That's got it, I think. Told you, you haven't got a lot of room to do anything, and you can't really put too much in. But I think that's going now. Yeah, it is. So obviously we are now pushing through that. Once we've got a bit of wheel uh, axle through, we'll be able to. Um, if I'm going to move that that way a bit to give me a bit more this way like that. Right, pushing that through now. Yep, it's just beginning to go proud of that end of that. coming through nicely right so now we can use that a bit more to push why is that sticking to do, believe it or not, is try and slide the pulley wheel back, it's coming back nicely, like so, put that there, put that lined in there like that, that's it, and we keep on pushing this through, So you can see it's not easy, but you don't want it where the cogs just move, slide on, because then it will slip when it's working. But we're winning now, we're getting there for it. Come on. Yeah, we're nearly there. So we want it so that that's just a tad more this way. That can now come back over there to where that's going to go, like so. Right, so where we've got that now is roughly, I can do the final little touches. So we've got the cog more or less level with that. Once we've got the other wheel on, because there's not much. There's a teeny bit of sideways play there. So I think we're more or less dead lined up with that. Right, so next is to find the little aluminium washer. Do you know what I've done? Exactly what I said. I haven't put that up, but I can still get that through. Yes, I think I can if I move that up. So this is where it does go wrong. Right, what I've got to do now is pull that back. And get myself out of jail but, but I'm doing this live and I have made a mistake because I've got to get that out about an eighth of an inch and then we'll get that over otherwise you have to try and take it all to bits and you don't want to do that right, is that out yet yes right a little bit more we're nearly there so I've done what I told you not to do 
but this is what happens because you just get so carried away in what you're doing that uh, you do, you just can miss things quite easily. Right, it's definitely got to go back a bit more. You can just do it, I think. That's the one. Right. So this is how you're going to save your bacon, is by getting that across there like so, getting that in there, getting that over that bit, and over that bit, twisting that round, and getting it onto the axle. Right, now we're back to wherever we were, and we've got to push it back again. easier this time. Right, that's that bit on. Now we've got to find the aluminium washer that's probably come off and we've dropped. Let's make sure it's not down there. Not sure where that went now. It just goes to show that you do need to keep an eye on what you're doing. If I can't find it, I'm not going to worry about it, but I found it. Right, so I'm just going to put a little blob of glue back on to the end of this wheel again. Just a little tad. Actually, I'm going to put it on here. Just on the axle, just on that bit. Pop that back in the glue pot. Get hold of the wheel. And start twisting it through. Right now. That's that like that. Now I'm going to check the measurement. So, I'm going to double check the measurement. So, it says wheel back to back 28 for 32 and for f and 40 millimeters for 45. So, 40 millimeters is what we want. And that is about how we are on that one. Yep, we're leaving it like that. And that is it. Not much play, a little bit of play, not a lot. I'm just going to see if I can move that there like so. Right, okay. So that's that bit. Now we'll set these up roughly about the right length apart. So we got there in the end, but like I say, you, you, it's... It's just remembering all the things that you've got to have on. They've got to go over that axle before you start. If you don't put them over that axle, then you won't get it on. And it does make a difference having four-wheel drive. So once you've got it on, you can just level it up. That's it. Right, so there we are. So that's the axle now. Um, and both axles through, okay, you can see that. That one won't turn because the motor, if I had a battery around, I could test it, couldn't I? But I don't, the problem is, is because I have not got much here because obviously just moving, I haven't got all the stuff to hand that I would normally have like a little spare battery but I can show you in the next video um, it running and I don't think I've got a supply that I can use I don't think there's any batteries on anything laying around that um, 
if I could actually use, I'll just have a look at this bit over here, to see if there's anything in there, but I don't think I have a spare battery at the moment, so sorry about that. sure what's going running through this actually probably far too much voltage for that I've got some small batteries but I haven't got the fittings to go on them so I don't think we can do that at the moment that Get that off so don't know how much charge is in these none probably but I'll just give it a quick try just in case I'll just uh, clip off the end of the wires turn it on the nothing on them to come out so nothing I can do on that right so anyway that's today's video so far so now what I would do um, is I will find something to test that with um, just to make sure that it's all snug it, it feels pretty good it feels firm that's got a little bit of sideways movement, so it's that, but it's that's all nice. So to me, that is a really nice little working railway chassis. You, you're not going to get a lot better than that for that kind of money. And everything's locked into position. The motor, I have put a tiny bit of super glue around the side of the motor as it's come around the hole. So that holds it. I've never had one move, and I, I've run this one for a long long time and I've had no problems with that and um, that one has got a little bit more sideways movement on it but it, it fits the track um, quite easily and you can see how it moves about on the track but it's it's never come off so yeah so that's what this one see this is only two wheel drive but I didn't really think about four-wheel drive at that moment in time when I built that one. But um, this one, I've decided I'm going to do. If at a later stage, then I'll just build another loco, which is easier instead of trying to take it all apart um, because it's all glued in now. So I don't really want to mess that up by, by fiddling around with it. So, uh, yeah. And as you can see in this one, there's weights as well because it does need a certain amount of weight. Um, to get the traction um, so that that's one thing about locos as they get bigger you well even, even with like say double o i mean I, i've had locos before where you put about 20 wagons on or something and and you have a slight incline on your railway and it won't go up it it'll get to it and slip so obviously you have traction tires and things but one of the other things is, is to weight your loco, because if it's heavy enough, it will grip. So that's, that's another thing, is, is the ratio. So you, you can have too much power. So if this was really powerful and light, the wheels would just slip. So you need the weight as well. But uh, anyway, so this one is four-wheel drive. That one is just two-wheel drive, okay? And uh, hopefully in the next video, I will uh, move on a bit. And show you it running as well okay what i'll do now while it's in this state because the next bit is to put these side plates on because this makes into a really lovely chassis so these these go on so they fit on and you've got like dummy springs and various other bits i'll just clip that in you can feel how tight it fits but that's beautiful so that that will go in like that um I'll probably put a bit of rivet detail on as well. I'm not going to video all of the rivet detail. I can show you them and explain to them where I got them from so, so you don't have to watch the other video if you don't want to. 
but that will go on. But I will paint all the inside black first, because otherwise it's difficult getting down in there to paint. So this does need painting before I go on with the next bit. But anyway, that's building the chassis. Okay, and like I said, I've done a I've done a light prime with just one of the. I I go to the pound shops and things. They're not a pound. Um, the cans of paint, but you can buy primers and various things, and and they're two to three pounds, something like that, two ninety nine, whatever. And I buy them, and they're quite good to spray. You can buy a sealer because this is um, an MDF um, type material, um, so you can buy an MDF sealer, and you can paint it with uh, MDF sealer, which I've got some of that somewhere as well. Um, whatever because otherwise you the, you will spend a lot of time painting to start with uh, and of course i have done a video on painting the laser cut edges as well because i i usually paint them with a matte paint to start with that seems to seal it better than if you put your gloss paint on um so anyway but i think that makes a really nice chassis um very good very strong and it really does the job so you know, on a very expensive loco, it's, it's not, it's going to be a very similar thing. Obviously, it's made of brass or, or whatever, steel and various things. But, but these, don't underestimate them. They, they go and they last and you really get lots of pleasure out of it. And of course, you can change the detail on things as well. Like, like this, if you go on to Phil's um, PS Models uh, website, there is a, a gallery on there and you can see all the locos and what people have done different. I mean, I've chopped the back of this down to half um, so it's not a full back because on a lot of these locos, you, you wouldn't have a driver and a fireman on most of them. You would probably just have one person doing, I mean, obviously this is a diesel, but on a steam loco, you would only get one person. Um, he would do the firing and the driving because it, it's not as though it's, going up with about 14 coaches full of people on and all that kind of thing. I think a lot of these little locos do more work now as regards passenger pulling than they ever did when they were first designed. But uh, anyway, so that, I, I, I just love building them because uh, the, the quality, the feel of it is, is really nice. So anyway, I will see you in the next video. Um, which won't be too long, but I will be painting some of the bits because I'm sure you don't want to just sit me sit and watch that being done. We want to get on with the actual loco build itself. Anyway, thank you. If you like, um, please subscribe. And if you subscribe and hit the bell button, you will then see all of the future videos. And of course, I'm closing on five, uh, 400 videos now. So we're getting very close to four. I think I'm about three off. So there's, there's lots of subjects, garden railways, uh, double O stuff, boats, um, live steam, proper live steam, five inch gauge, uh, all sorts of things. So yeah, hopefully if you're a modeler, there's something on there for you. See you in the next video. Bye now.